Today we'll be learning about how to check the integrity of a file by comparing checksums. This is a fairly simple process using Windows 11 and PowerShell, so let's get started real quick. First we need to launch a new PowerShell. One of the easiest ways is just to search for PowerShell at the bottom and click on Windows PowerShell. And once the new shell has been launched for you, you'll notice that you are currently in some directory. I'm currently in the C user savvy directory on my computer, so my file that I'm trying to compare checksums with is located in the downloads directory. So I'm going to have to point my command that I'm going to use, which is called get dash file and then capital hash, which comes standard with Windows 11 and PowerShell. So make sure that you're using PowerShell to do this. That way you can use it right away and not install anything extra. Definitely a quick and easy way to check the integrity of a file if you have a hash. And all that we're doing today is checking something called the integrity of a file. In simple words, that means is the file that we downloaded is the same as what the server actually is serving us. And there was no malicious change between the actual file and the one that we received. This allows you to be sure that whoever supplied the file is the one who originally created it and nothing malicious done to it. It also helps you see if a file got corrupted while downloading. So my file is located in the C colon slash users directory and then savvy, which is my user followed by the downloads folder. If I just tab, it'll automatically try filling in directories or files. I know the specific file name I'm looking for starts with a K. I can type in K and just do tab and it should automatically fill it in for me. You can do this for whatever file that you're trying to get a hash for. So the file I'm doing is Kali Linux 2023, which I downloaded from the internet and it's a Linux distribution that I wanna install. And I wanna confirm that everything got downloaded correctly. It's a big file and nothing got corrupted. That way I don't go installing something that doesn't actually end up working. So this is my example. You can use most files, but you will need a hash of some kind that is supplied from the place that you're downloading the file from, or else there's no way to really check the integrity. So in my case, since I downloaded Kali Linux, they do have a checksum. So they supplied a SHA-256 checksum or hash. Just make sure you have the proper hash for whatever you're trying to check. I wanna make sure to copy this hash and save it so I can compare the file I just got done downloading to this hash number right here. Also, I can tell what I've downloaded is the actual file I should have expected to download with no corruption or malicious changes. So back to the PowerShell, and I'm gonna do space, I'm gonna do dash capital A, and then another space, and then type in SHA256. Since I know the hash algorithm that was used was mentioned and it said SHA256, Okay, I'm just gonna press enter and then get the file hash. It's gonna take a little bit, but once it's sorted, it says here the algorithm is SHA256 and then the hash number from the file. And if you made it this far, smash that like button for me. You figured out how to get a hash. Let's make sure to compare them. And I'm on the road to 50,000 subscribers, so subscribe below if you enjoy learning. And this is great because since we have the hash number now, all we have to do is compare the one given on the website versus the one that we have here locally. So in order to make things a little easier, instead of us having to read out every single letter and number character and compare it to the other one, we can take advantage of the command that we wrote before and the value from the website and see if they're equal to each other. I do want to talk about get file hash for a moment though and what algorithms you can use with it. So the dash A, all that represents is algorithm, which is a shortcut. And the algorithms this supports is SHA1, SHA256, also SHA384, and SHA512. It also supports the MD5 hash algorithm. So if you have a different type of hash, you can specify it with the dash A and then space, whichever one that you're trying to use and get information on. That way you know back to trying to actually compare two hashes, we'll go back up all the way. This time I'm going to put a parenthesis out front and then continue writing my command out in the back. So my file again is located in C, users, savvy, in the downloads folder, and it's called Kali Linux 2023. Again, use whatever file name that you're trying to get a hash for. Then we'll put the dash A like we had before, put SHA256 because that's the one we wanted to sort. So now we have pretty much the same exact thing that we had above. And then we'll put the closing parenthesis. 
Then I want to type in dot H A S H for hash. Then I just want to put a space. Notice how I'm continuing on to a new line. And then I'll just type in dash EQ, which stands for equal to. So it's checking whatever is returned out of this get file hash command and take that entire contents and compare it to something. So I think you can guess what we're going to put here. Make sure to put quotes in and put the hash from the website in between those two quotes. So then we can check if the file hash matches what the website told us it's supposed to be. I do this a lot with Linux distributions just to make sure that I don't have a corrupt file before I install it onto a disk. Again, I showed you where I got this on the Kali website. You'll have to make sure that the website provides one for you. After you have it pasted in, you can press enter. Give it a few seconds here. And once everything has been completed, you'll get a true or false statement printed out to you. True means that yes, the two match each other one for one. So that's a great thing. We now know a file that does have integrity and it hasn't been modified in any way or corrupted. So we've confirmed what we've downloaded is what we expected to download. So let's just say something is wrong. I'm going to change the very last alphanumeric here to an E instead of an A and check the integrity once more. We should expect to get false instead of true this time. If I press enter and give it a few seconds, then I would expect this to say false, which means these two hash numbers of what you supplied versus what the file has do not match up and something actually was modified between the time that you downloaded it to your computer or the source that you got it from in comparison to when it was first released. Again, false right here indicates that these two are not the same. And that's it. That's how you check file integrity here in Windows 11 and how to make sure that a file is not corrupt. You've done a wonderful job at this point. Congratulations on learning something new. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.